Hey everyone, this is Carl from Skiggly Tech and today we're going to talk about the upcoming game Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. Developed by Tripwire Interactive and Antimatter Games, Rising Storm 2 Vietnam takes place during the late war stages of the Vietnam War. As with other multiplayer games, you are given the freedom to customize your character. Customization allows for all the army types, namely the National Liberation Front, the North Vietnamese Army, the United States Army, and the United States Marine Corps. With each army, you can also choose how your character would look like ranging from the pants, the hair color, or even facial features. For now, there are limited amounts of configuration available. However, do expect more skins that can either be bought or earned through achieving some game profile objectives after the game officially launches. The gameplay is something to talk about. Boasting of an almost true-to-life field experience, health bars are non-existent. A bullet or two into your in-game avatar's vials can prove fatal. Some flesh wounds can greatly disable your character's mobility. We are taking Charlie. Each game mode starts with choice between the two factions, Vietnam or the United States, with two army types for each. You are then greeted with a choice of what role you would want to play for the game, each of which has a limit. For example, there can only be one commander per game, which is pretty obvious. The selection will indicate how many each players are doing which roles. Weapons of choice will also be given to the players during this selection. After that's done, you now wait to spawn and take some objectives. Further diving into the gameplay, we come across two game modes, Supremacy Mode and Territories Mode. Supremacy is an objective-based game mode. You can claim victory by capturing flags or completing objectives in a specific order. Unlike Battlefield 1, capturing objectives without the correct order won't earn points for the team. For example, Objective Alpha should be captured first before committing to capturing Objective Beta if the team wants to earn points. Due to this, a very tight teamwork is needed to capture and defend flags throughout the game. The other mode called Territories is similar to the Battlefield Rush mode. The teams are given the role of either the attacker or the defender. The teams are also given a fixed amount of respawns called tickets. The attacking team needs to capture the objectives within a time frame or before the team ticket depletes to zero. On the other side, the defending team needs to defend their points until the end of the round or until their team ticket depletes. Game modes heavily rely on teamwork and the role each player has for the team is very crucial. Up to 64 players can connect into a game mode making that 32 players for each side. The team is further divided into 8 squads, with each of the squads having a squad leader. The squad leaders then report to a common commander, establishing a line of command making it easier for players to coordinate movements. The game is visually appealing. With the Unreal Engine as their development tool, this helped the game to be as close to reality as possible. Just take a look at the visuals. They also emphasize this close to reality experience with the help of changes to common game dynamics. For example, enemies can be pinpointed by color coded indicators as well, so camouflaging skills are highly appreciated in this game. Of course, great visuals should be accompanied by great in-game ambient sounds. Grass movements, faraway bullet hits, and choppers flying by are audible while you move around making your Warzone gaming experience complete. However, we should note that the language that your Vietnamese soldiers use is still English with a kind of Vietnamese accent. We thought that it would have been nice to get a choice of Vietnamese voiceovers with subtitles instead, but it's just us nitpicking at this point, since the ambient sound chatter is in Vietnamese as heard in this clip. 
việc này sẽ dạy chúng một bài học là đừng có dạy mà xâm lược một nước chúng ta. Overall, we like this game. Since closed beta, we have spent 50 hours of playtime before we did this review. We would say that this game is for hardcore FPS gamers or tactical FPS gamers. Team plays are very crucial to winning the game. Your skills alone will not win the game. The minimum system requirement to play the game is fairly low, making this game almost available to anyone with an entry-level gaming rig. However, do take note that 32-bit systems are not supported. With that, we give this game a for the majority rating for system requirements. Now let's go to the price. With a purchase price of less than 30 US dollars, this game is worth it. You'll also get the deluxe version of the game for this price point. We highly think that the game is underpriced given the value you get. We won't hesitate to give this game a great value rating. So there you go. We hope you like our review of Rising Storm 2. Please let us know what your impressions of the game are in the comment section below. If you didn't like this review, go on, hit the dislike button. If you like it, please do hit like and subscribe. Till next time.